Welcome to Biology Class Basics with Ms. Lerner. This video will introduce you to some of the major policies and procedures and philosophies of biology class to help you get the most out of your school year. First off, you're going to need to know a lot of stuff for this class. How do you know what you need to know? Well, you're going to be receiving uh, a couple of very important documents with each unit. One is called Kudos, the other is a unit guide. This will give you a lot of information about what you need to know, but if you're ever in doubt, please ask. KUDOS stands for Know, Understand, and Do. This document is essentially a summary of each unit. Um, just takes one piece of paper to give you the overall ideas that you want to be able to know and demonstrate your understanding of. The unit guide is a much more detailed document. It follows the same basic listing as on your KUDOS, However, it gives you much more details in terms of vocabulary, biology words, academic vocabulary to help you explain your ideas, and resources that you'll use to learn all of this material. There is also a list of study questions that you can use in whatever way it's most helpful for you. How will you learn this information? Content is presented in a number of ways. Uh, there is in-class discussion, lecture, uh, there's reading of textbooks and other kinds of materials, handouts, websites, and a variety of educational videos. The content in this class is often flipped. That means that you'll be introduced to the content first at home. This gives you a chance to process the material at your own pace and to determine what questions you have. Then in class, we will have time to debrief the material and to answer your questions and to have additional practice to reinforce your understanding. If you still uh, are feeling that you need additional help to understand the material, you can ask one of our amazing biology tutors or of course come into a tutorial or study session and work with me directly. You're going to use these resources to create your own study guides for biology. This is a very, very effective way to help you to do a number of things. One of course is to reinforce and actually learn the material by putting it in your own words and clarifying exactly what you know and perhaps a little about what you don't know yet. It's going to enable you to use various formats. You can write or draw or use whatever diagrams, formats that will help you to show the material and help you to remember uh, the different ideas that you are learning. The main thing is that you are doing this out of your own brain and that you are going to create a tool that is wonderful for you to study later. You're going to remember it better than any material that I can give you. Uh, and you'll have those summaries ready to use to study for the assessments in the class. I encourage you to be efficient and to think about studying as an ongoing task. If you work hard on your homework and during class and creating your study guides, you really should not have to put a great deal of additional time into studying before assessments because you're already going to know the material. There are two kinds of assessments in any class, really. The first is called formative assessment. Uh, what this means are ways to assess where you are, see how you're doing, what do you understand, where do you still need to improve, but in a way that's purely practice, meaning that it won't be counted in your grades for the course. But it provides you not only practice, but excellent uh, feedback to determine what you still need to work on and where you can improve. The other kind of assessment, of course, is summative assessment. You know these as the things that are counted in your grades. It's also an opportunity for you to show what you've learned. You'll always have multiple types of formative assessment before you have a summative assessment. Uh, and it's still a chance for you to get feedback because often the same material is tested uh, multiple times during the year. So you'll continue to get feedback each time you take an assessment. In biology, grades are weighted. That means grades are put in separate categories. You'll learn more about this as the class goes on. The important thing to know for now is not to worry overly about grades. I know that's easier said than done. Um, grades are certainly important to all of us. That being said, the best way to improve your grades is to learn the material. There will be many opportunities in biology to learn, to relearn, to practice, and to bring up your grades or pull up your grades if there's an area that you've struggled in. I guarantee that this class is accessible to everyone and that anybody who works hard and keeps on track and gets help when they need it will pass this class with a C or higher. In general, um, 
Most assignments and checkups are scored on a four-point scale as shown. Occasionally half points are used as well. Checkups are short assessments, five to ten minutes, uh, about around the end of each section of the unit. And what's nice about the checkups, they are an assessment, but they're not considered a test because you're able to use a study guide. So you'll be preparing your study guide throughout a section and then you'll take a short checkup on that section. If you do get a low score on a checkup, uh, you will be able to come in and complete checkup corrections, uh, improve your study guide, show that you have an understanding of the material and you can raise those scores uh, most often up to a four. You do need to complete all assignments for this class as they are all essential to helping us to understand where you are in terms of understanding the material. On that note, the philosophy of this class is summed up by the idea of zap. Zeros aren't productive. There's no point in not completing an assignment and getting a zero. The whole purpose is to learn from the assignments. I understand that you have much to do and sometimes it might be difficult to get an assignment done on time. And of course, it's important for you to eat and sleep and have a life outside of your school classes. So zap cards allow you to have a little bit of flexibility. If for whatever reason you're not able to finish an assignment on time, you simply complete a zap card and then either follow up on your own to complete an assignment, or if you need help, come in during a tutorial or study session uh, to get that help to complete the assignment. If you use little, you know, a small number of zap cards, it won't have any significant impact on your grade. If you do have trouble getting your work done on time uh, and you use an excessive number of zap cards, that will start to impact the homework completion portion of your grade and we'll need to work together to help you to improve your time management. There are some exemptions uh, to zap cards and what that means is that uh, I may ask you to fill out a zap card to track the fact that you don't have an assignment done, uh, but it will not always be counted against your homework completion score uh, in certain cases. So for example, if you're having difficulty understanding one part of an assignment, um, try not to just leave it blank. That's not really helpful for anyone. Uh, write down a note about what it is that you don't understand, uh, preferably a specific question or maybe a concept that's confusing you, and we'll make sure that you can get some help for that during class. Uh, and if it's a single question, um, it, you don't even necessarily need to fill out a zap card. You can check with me or the tutors during class. Um, if you feel that you struggled with a whole assignment and it's taking you a long time at home uh, and that's just enough, <laughs> I understand. Uh, in this class, uh, the goal is to spend about 30 to 45 minutes uh, on homework a night. Some people do need to spend a little bit less or a little bit more. Uh, everyone's different. Um, but if it seems like on a particular assignment you're spending an excessive amount of time, you know, stop after a while, take stock, figure out what's going on. Do you really understand the assignment? Um, is it something that you need to get some help with? And you can always draw a line and, and write a brief note about what the problem was and work with uh, me or a tutor later. And if you put in a good faith effort uh, to complete that assignment and to understand, um, then the zap card will not be counted against you. Remember that zap cards are not punishment. They're simply a way for us to track the assignments and to help you to stay on top um, of all the things that you need to get done uh, and to make sure that you are working to improve your time management along with your other academic skills. And of course, uh, if there's any uh, special circumstances that get in the way of you completing an assignment, please come see me and we'll work something out. Tests. There are a variety of tests in biology, different formats. We'll get more into the details of that later. Uh, the main thing that distinguishes tests from some of the other uh, things, particularly checkups, is that you cannot use a study guide uh, in general on tests. Uh, you can use study guides for preparing. You should, uh, because you'll have a study guide for each section uh, that you're being tested on. Uh, however, there is um, some information that I want you to be able to work with out of your head on a test. Okay, so be prepared for that. And uh, again, I'll give you more information on tests as time goes on. A special thing that, that I do in biology is to use the face feedback icon that you see here. It's a great way for you to, uh, you know, sit and reflect for a moment as you finish an assignment or an assessment. How did it go? How are you feeling about your level of understanding? Uh, was the assignment or test clear? Um, where are you? 
and it gives me some quick feedback about how you're feeling so I can check in with you if you're having an unhappy face today. Uh, the squarest record the time you spent either working on an assignment, and I mean actually working, okay? Many studies show that multitasking is not effective or efficient. Get in the habit of working on one thing at a time and start to keep track of the time you spend working. It's, it can be very enlightening uh, to see how long it takes you to do certain tasks. So the square is to help you with that. So you're gonna write, uh, for example, if you spend 30 minutes working on a particular assignment, you'll write 30 in the square. If it's a checkup or a test, you can write down the amount of time you spent preparing or studying in that square. And finally, a word on academic skills. These skills are essential to any class you'll ever take. You can improve them with practice. Be conscious about improving these skills. Try not to get so caught up in getting every little thing done that you sort of forget the big picture, that the one of the main purposes of schooling is not just to you know shovel in information and regurgitate it, but really to improve your ability to learn, your ability to show what you know and to communicate with other people. So really make a point of practicing these skills, getting feedback, where can you improve, practice again, so that gradually over the course of this year, you're going to get better at these skills and that's gonna make you more successful in every class you ever take and in most jobs and life as well. That's it for now. Thanks so much for listening to Biology Class Basics and I wish all of you a wonderful year.